Hey, what's up, YouTube? Today is June 28th, 2021, and this is a major milestone for me because today marks the day that I've been on YouTube or been uh, creating content for YouTube for six months. Um, I started my YouTube content creation journey essentially on New Year's, so January 1st, 2021, and man, have I learned a lot about YouTube, but even more so, I've learned a lot about myself um, throughout this journey. And this video is just gonna be talking about the seven lessons I've learned um, within my six month journey on YouTube. But before I get into those lessons, I just wanna explain why I even wanted to hop on YouTube in the first place. Um, I'm 31 years old, I've been, you know, binging YouTube content for a long time since its inception. And for the longest, I had a, had a dream of becoming a, a YouTuber. Uh, just different life events got in the way. I've been a serial entrepreneur. I've lived all around the world. I've launched multiple different businesses, you know, including a distillery. Um, I've gotten into blockchain. I'm an award-winning author. Like I've done a lot of different things. But creating content is something that I've loved uh, probably more than anything. And when I was actually traveling around the world, I had a, a blog called The Gopreneur where I was producing video content and I uploaded a little bit of, of it to YouTube, but I didn't really take YouTube seriously. But after the pandemic hit, uh, I realized that I needed more of a digital presence online. And one of my mentors told me, he's like, Craig, you know, posting is not promoting. You actually have to be consistent with, with your content. You have to really promote yourself. And so that's one of the reasons why I got into YouTube was not only just to create content, but to just to share my journey, my ideologies and my methodologies with the world. And so far, so good. Like it's been one hell of a journey. It's been very, very difficult. But without further ado, let's get into the seven reasons or the seven lessons that I've learned from my first six months on YouTube. Lesson number one is that you must motivate yourself. I cannot elaborate on this enough. YouTube is so hard. Like YouTube wants you to shoot videos and edit videos like your Steven Spielberg. They want you to have your SEO game like Bill Gates and they want you to have you know, these thumbnails with the artwork of a Picasso or something. Like, it's just super, super hard to do all these things. And so at the end of the day, like you are your most important critic and you have to motivate yourself to keep going and to keep putting out content on a regular basis. And it's a lot easier said than done, but there has to be a deep seated reason for why you even want to become a YouTuber in the first place. And so for me, as I um, brought up in my introduction, is that I really wanted to share my ideology and methodology and life journey with the world. And so that is my deep seated reason for why I became a YouTuber. So let's move on to lesson number two. Lesson number two is just to flat out ignore the YouTube algorithm. I mean, my God, like there's a major obsession over what is a YouTube al algorithm? Like, what is it doing? How is it changing? Like what SEO, what tips, what hacks, TubeBuddy, vidIQ, like you got all these programs and all these different people trying to hack the YouTube algorithm and there's an obsession over it. And at, in the beginning, like especially when you're starting, like disregard all that. Because here's a fun fact. Like as a business owner, like I know that nobody really is revealing the truth about the YouTube algorithm because the value in the YouTube algorithm is the fact that nobody knows how it really operates. Like the moment YouTube lets people know what their algorithm is really doing, that's the moment that YouTube becomes invaluable. So like there's an obsession over something that very, very few people truly understand. And these people will never let you know what the YouTube algorithm really does because that's the value of YouTube, it's algorithm. So in the beginning, like ignore all of that because it's a pointless obsession that's gonna drive you down a rabbit hole to a point of no return. And this feeds into my next lesson, lesson number three. Lesson number three, which 
goes on top of lesson number two is to stop obsessing over all the YouTube advice channels. Um, this was a problem that I had in the beginning was that I was constantly watching, studying, and trying to obsess over like what these YouTube advice channels were saying. And then ultimately after, you know, realizing that all of them were saying the same exact things just in like minute different ways, I realized that I just had to focus on myself and push out my own type of content. In all actuality, I, I'm super surprised that there's this many YouTube advice channels. Um, I think YouTube likes uh, promoting people that talk about YouTube all the time. So this might be the secret reason why there's so many of these people. Who knows? But in the beginning, like, don't obsess over the algorithm, nor uh, do not obsess over all these advice channels. Just do you and figure out um, what is the best way to stay consistent with your content. That's all I have to say about that. So let's move on to lesson number four. Lesson number four might be a little bit cliche, but it's really to think big, but start small. Like you and like maybe a lot of other beginner YouTubers out there, we had this mega vision of becoming, you know, this million subscriber channel, this mainstream channel, or making all this passive income, which, you know, I have another video for that that I've already recorded about with the fallacy of passive income. But at the end of the day, it's like you might have your vision for becoming, you know, a big time YouTuber, but at the end of the day, you have to start small. And whether that's shooting one video a week, one video a month, who knows, who cares, but you have to start off at your own cadence, at your own pace, and not really worry about what other people are doing, worrying about how many followers other people have, you know, fretting over how many followers you don't have. You know, it's easier said than done. Like, I wish I had more followers, but I know that's gonna come in the future. I just have to keep um, pushing out consistent, high quality content like this, and I'll eventually meet my long-term goal of becoming, you know, a larger YouTuber. So with all that said, let's move on to lesson number five. Lesson number five is huge. And this is essentially to find your own voice. This kind of goes back to uh, my whole rant about the inundation of advice channels and how I find them to be practically all the same. Like whatever you do, like do not copy other people verbatim. Like I know there's only a finite number of channel topics that people could really, um, you know, master or, you know, get into, but whatever lane that you find, carve out your own path and be uniquely you. Like there's, there's nothing worse than copying other people's YouTubes or copying other people's intros or everybody trying to be like Graham Stephan and smash the like button. I mean, it's just, uh, find your own voice, create your own setup, do you find out whatever that is and stick to it. And I guarantee there will be other people that will gravitate to you because you're uniquely and authentically you. So um, with all that said, let's move on to lesson number six. Lesson number six is that scheduling or the use of the scheduling tool is your best friend. Um, one of the secrets that I've learned is that it's best to kind of pre-record, pre-edit, and pre-upload content if you can. And so the scheduling tool is one of my favorite tools to use because I was able or am able to create fully polished videos and schedule them to drop in advance of the date that I actually recorded them on. And this is a great way for you just to be organized uh, in the beginning because it's gonna be really hard to find your cadence, to find your rhythm. Um, I've settled on one video a week, typically on Wednesdays. And so I'm able to shoot that content and schedule it out weeks and or months in advance if possible. So you really wanna be organized when you're starting out and one of the best tools to help you with that is the, is the scheduling feature on the back end of the YouTube uh, platform. So moving forward, let's get to my last, uh, but probably most important lesson. And last but not least, lesson number seven is to simply have fun and just don't quit. Like I said, this journey of YouTube is so hard. Anybody telling you it's not, it's full of cap, like they're lying to you. 
And in order to keep persevering through um, the early stages of your YouTube journey, like you have to have fun with this. Like, figure out how to gamify it. You know, may, reward yourself after shooting a video and uploading video. Who knows? But you just have to stay the course, and you just have to make fun out of the process. Don't like, don't worry about the end destination. Fall in love with this process. Um, like I said, this journey has been super, super rewarding. Um, I've had my ups and downs. Um, some days I wanted to quit. Sometimes I was like, no, forget YouTube. I'll just do something else. But like, I still find the energy and the passion, you know, to keep moving uh, forward with my YouTube content creation journey. So I really hope these uh, seven lessons, lessons added value to you. And um, yeah, that's all I have for you for right now. So in sum, this journey of becoming a YouTuber, my first six months has been full of its pros and cons, its highs and its lows, but I'm really having a blast with uh, becoming a YouTuber. Um, by far, becoming a YouTuber and learning how to create content, how to shoot videos, edit videos, how to create value on screen has helped me across all my lines of business. And if you're a brand new YouTuber and you don't have a lot of followers like, like I do at the moment, just keep going. Like, do you stay the course, don't settle, and have a lot of fun with this journey. And so as I do with all my videos, uh, I have a question of the day. And so for anybody who's watching, like, what motivates you to continue posting content even when you have uh, not that many subscribers? So what keeps you motivated even though you don't have a lot of subscribers here on YouTube? I'm really curious to hear your thoughts, so please be sure to drop your comments below. If you want to become the entrepreneur of your life, you can begin this process today by subscribing to this channel. Also, please be sure to click the notification bell to be alerted for whenever new content drops. Until next time.